Hello everyone, as promised, here is your quiz review. Now this will be our first quiz that we have where there's going to be some more math in there. I know math can cause some anxiety for folks. Um, I do think it's it should be relatively, it's very manageable for you. So, uh, and it will follow along with a lot of the material that's presented within the reading, but I know the reading can also be very difficult. So what I want to try to do is do some walkthroughs of some problems that you might see on this week's quiz. So uh, feel free to watch this video. Now you should be able to be successful in the quiz without watching the video, just by understanding the material within the chapter, but I think this will help. So if you have a few minutes, you may wanna uh, take some time to watch this. We'll be walking through about five or six uh, um, various uh, type of examples, again, that might be representative of what you'll see on this week's quiz. So with that, let's go to our magic blue graph paper here, and we're going to walk through some problems. All right, so here's our first problem. We've got the Seattle Radiology Group plans to invest in a new CT scanner. The group estimates that $2,000 net revenue uh, per scan. Uh, the preliminary market ass uh, assessments indicate that demand will be less than 6,000 scans per year. The group is considering a scanner, we'll call it Scanner A, that would result in a total fixed costs of $2 million and would yield a profit of seventy-five dollars or $750,000 per year at that volume of 6,000 scans. What is the implied variable cost per scan for scanner A? And when you're doing these problems, you do want to show your work. Just don't give me an answer uh, on there. You got to show me how you got the answer uh, when you're doing the quiz. So kind of the basics. What did you add? What did you multiply? You know, kind of step one, two, three, that, that kind of thing. If you just give me an answer and it's the wrong answer, you won't get any points at all. If you just give me an answer and it's the right answer, you will get some points, but you won't get full points because I don't know exactly how you got that answer. So uh, demonstrate how you were able to produce that answer. And here's the good news. If you demonstrate how you got the answer, and the answer was totally wrong, uh, but you demonstrated some thought process, you're going to get some points. So, long story short, show your work, you're going to get some points for that, even if it's completely wrong. All right, so that's my little uh, uh, discussion on that. Let's break down this question. This question really is, is focusing around that uh, equation, the, the total profit, total income equation, which is, um, we'll kind of write this down here to get a base here. So that's total revenue minus total expense and the key is what is expense is going to equal your total profit or you might hear net income used. Don't confuse revenue with how much money you're making in the end. Revenue is kind of what you're collecting up front. Then of course you got all of the expenses that come out of that revenue to give you your total profit, or in some cases you might hear them again here total income used. All right. And then the the trick of this question, or the, the thing that it's really drilling down on, is your understanding of what is right in this area. What is um, comprising of total expense? Total expense is made of two different components. One is the fixed costs which we happen to know in this particular question. And the other one is going to be called the, the variable costs. That's what it's really uh, honing in on. All right, so let's, let's work through the problem and, and see how to, uh, how to solve it here. So the first thing we have to figure out 
in building this equation is uh, what is total revenue? Is that given here? Well, no, it's not. We know uh, we have a revenue number per scan at 2,000, and we know number of scans. So that helps. All right, so we can figure this out. So we're going to take, again, we're trying to build that total revenue number. So we're going to take the $2,000. We're going to multiply it times this projected number of scans. And let's see, doing the math here, taking my phone out, calculating. Well, you can do that in your head, actually. It will be $12 million. Okay? Great. So we're building our equation here. We now know what uh, total revenue is, is at 12 million. But we're not done. We got to figure out some other parts here. So let's, we do know the 12 million dollars minus total expenses. Now the, remember it's fixed and variable. Do we know anything? Yes, we do know one of those. Total fixed costs are at two million dollars. So we can plug that in. So it's going to be minus two million dollars. Okay? And hopefully you're seeing that because remember total revenue minus total expense. Another way to say that is total revenue minus fixed costs minus variable costs equals total profit. But what we don't know is the variable costs. That information is not given to us. Do we know total profit? Well, let's see. We do. That's given to us in this problem. Um, it's right here and would yield a profit of uh, 750000 per year. So we can plug that in. Okay. So really, now we're just looking at some very basic algebra to find out what those variable costs would be. Well, I think you can do this part. 12 million minus uh, 2 million. That's going to get, uh, I'm just going to say 10 million to make it simplified there. Minus variable costs equals the $750,000. A little bit of simple algebra. I think it's pretty intuitive um, on how you to uh, figure out what the missing variable is here in order to get, you know, if you have a $10 million and you're going to end up with only $750,000, you know that the variable cost has to equal 9 million, let's see, at $9,250,000. Yay! So we found out, we basically have built this whole equation. The 12 million minus the uh, $9,250,000 equals the 700, that's a 7, believe it or not, $750,000. But, <laughs> there's a little, always, there's always a twist, isn't there? It is what is the implied variable costs for scanner A. And we want variable costs per scan. That's the twist. So if you just stopped here, you would be not quite all the way there. So to go all the way there, we're going to move up to a little extra space up here. We got to figure out the variable cost per scan. We've got the 9,250,000. How many scans? Well, we've been given a projection all throughout this particular example of uh, that 6,000 uh, 6, scans per year. So we're going to divide that by 6,000. And uh, if you do that, you come up with, again, the 9.2 five zero million uh, or nine not nine million two hundred and fifty thousand divided by six thousand scans 
Let's see, running the math here, that one I will have to use a calculator for, and that comes out to 1000 Five hundred and forty-one dollars and some change and sixty-six uh, cents. So there you go. That is the answer right there. So I think you can see it's pretty easy. We're just doing some addition, some subtraction, some very uh, simple uh, algebra here. Just really trying to make sure that you understand, you know, the uh, the total profit equation you know, right up here, do you, do you really know what that means and what it's comprised of, of both those fixed and variable costs and just kind of massaging that formula in, in, various, uh, in various ways. So there you go. That wasn't too bad. All right, let's move on to our next example. All right, let's take a look at our next sample. This one, we are still going to be using that profit equation. So let's... Um, Let's write that down before we kind of get started here. It's kind of a, a reference for you. So I'm just going to abbreviate a little bit, but we've got, you know, that total revenue minus total costs equals total profit. All right, so let's read through this. We've got the radiology group plans to invest in a new CT scanner. Sorry, I'm picking on CT and then scanners a lot here. Um, the group estimates that you're going to receive uh, $2,000 in revenue per scan. Primary market uh, assessments indicate demand will be, uh, will be uh, less than 7,000 scans per year. The group is considering a scanner called Scanner B. Uh, what would, um, that would result in fixed costs of a half a million. Okay, so we know fixed costs. That would yield a profit of half a million, just by coincidence, at that volume of 700 scans. Here's the, I guess, the twist is what is the estimated break-even volume in number of scans, okay, that's what we're going to come up with, for, you know, the scanner B. So let's talk about break-even. What is, when we use our profit equation, how is break-even going to even help us with that? Break even, all that is, is, is using our total profit equation and just saying our total profit is going to equal zero. That's all. So we're going to deconstruct these two components here so that we can figure out what is going to get us to zero. Break even. Anything above, we're staking money. Anything below, we're, we're not making money. The other key piece is um, we're going to be looking at number of scans. So another way to think about it is we're going to be looking at revenue um, basically per scan, which we know, and I'll just say times S for scan, minus our variable costs times our scans, running out of room here, minus, and can you think of it? What's going to be minus next? That's right, our fixed costs. And that's all going to equal zero. So again, this is, this, what I've written here is no different than what we have here, just written in a little bit different format. So what do we know? What do we got? All right, do we have revenue per scan? Because we're gonna do, we gotta figure out how many scans it's gonna take to equal zero. We do, okay. We do know that um, the group estimates that our revenue per scan is two thousand. So check, we got that part of the problem. We know that we're solving for scan. That's the one we don't know is what the number of scans are gonna be to equal zero. Do we know variable cost per scan? Uh, let's see. We've got. Total fixed cost, okay, check. We got that one down, but we don't know our variable cost. So it's really kind of similar to the last problem. We're going to find out what those variable costs are uh, per scan, then go back and solve for a zero profit equation. All right, so let's see what that looks like. So the first thing we got to do, same steps as we did before. I'll change colors here. We'll go to yellow. 
and we are going to take our, um, we're going to solve for that uh, total revenue right now. And we know that we're getting uh, $2,000 per scan. We know there are 7,000 scans, or at least estimated. Running the math on that is going to be um, $14 million. Okay, so there's part one. Let's go ahead and plug that in and see what it looks like. So we got 14 million minus, let's um, plug in, uh, well, we got variable costs unknown, minus fixed costs, which we do know, listed right up in here somewhere. There we go, right up in there. equals, what does it equal? Remember, it's total profit. Again, it might be, you might see net income on there. But in, in this case, we do know that. Uh, we have a total profit right listed here. All right. So we're solving for VC. So we're going to simplify our formula a little bit. I think you can figure out this. We've got 14 million. And we've got uh, 500,000. Let's simplify that. That's going to be 13,500,000. And we're still minus our whatever our mystery variable costs are. And that's still going to equal that 500,000. So I think you can probably solve for that VC um, right in your head. Uh, on what that has to be, and it's uh, pretty easy. That has to be at least, or has to be, 13 million. But, like before, we got to find out that per scan. So we got variable cost all lumped together, you know, for that, but we don't have it down per scan. So we're just going to simply take that and divide it by the number of scans. How many scans were there? 7,000. And let me take my phone out and calculate that. And looks like we're getting 1,857 dollars and 14 cents. Okay, so we are close. Now I'm going to open up another page. So hopefully in any of these examples that you're writing this down as we go so you have these kind of these numbers all like at a nice you know your pencil and paper in hand is recommended as you're as you're watching these review videos <clears throat> so let's open up a new page and let's take some of that information that we have and, and populate it into um, that profit formula that we are turning into that break even so we were able to calculate. We know the $2,000 uh, revenue times scans, I'll just say S, minus, and we now know that uh, our variable cost per scan, I'm going to round here just to make it e a little bit easier, is uh, eight, uh, 1857 So I'm going to introduce a little bit of error into this. Um, times our number of scans. Okay, so remember what this is our going back to that profit equation. This is our revenue. This is our variable cost. And then what am I going to do next? Minus our fixed costs, which were given to us because they're fixed. Doesn't make a difference. Now, whether we have one scan or 10,000 scans or one patient or 10,000 patients. We have a fixed expense that we have to eat. And that one was 500,000. Um, 500, Here is the zinger. He, but we are doing break even. So now we're going to toss out that projected revenue that they had, which was a half a million. We want to know the number of scans that makes this whole thing equal zero. So we're going to do a little bit of very simple algebra here. Let's start simplifying this equation so we can solve for S. 
first thing we'll do, take that 2000, and I'll just say 2000 S, and that's what that means when you don't, you can remove the multiplication sign, minus um, 157 S, and I'm going to add 500,000 to both sides of the equation, so that removes it from this side and basically pops it over here. Okay, so now we're saying what S is going to equal 500,000? Let's say you didn't like, oh my god, I don't remember my algebra. You could just randomly start putting numbers in if you had to until eventually you get there, and you'll get there pretty quickly, you know, a couple probably within four to five guesses, you know, you would you would probably get that number pretty quickly. Or we can actually do this algebraically correct. And when it's written like this, it's very easy. You can simply subtract the two. And uh, if you kind of remember back from, uh, from the old algebra days, and that would equal 2000 minus 2000 S minus 100 and or 1,857s equals 143s equals 500,000. How do you solve for s? Remember, it's division at this point. So we're going to divide each side of this formula or this equation by 143, and that leaves. Um, just S on this side and 500,000 divided by 143. And then that means S equals, doing my calculator out here, S equals 3,400 and, whoops, that's 3,400. Brace that out here. And 96.5 scans. There we go. So we found the number of scans that it would take to equal zero. In other words, to equal break even. You can check your math on this. So you can take those number of scans. And you can go right back up in here and plug it in. Now let's go ahead and do that and see what that looks like. So 2,000 times three, $2,000 per scan, this is the, the revenue, uh, times 3,496.5 scans equals, let's see here, looking at my calculator, six, million nine hundred ninety two zero 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 minus do the math here one thousand eight hundred and fifty seven these are variable costs per scan three thousand four hundred ninety six point five scans equals six million four hundred ninety two and uh, 72, then minus the 500,000. Let's run that math. I mean, visually, it looks pretty darn close. Yep, it's close. And remember, I introduced a little bit of rounding in here, so um, that actually equals uh, 72. Uh, I was shooting for zero. Had I carried all my cents out and carried all my... Um, scans out all the way out a couple more decimal points I would have been I would have got that perfectly but 72 when we're dealing with numbers of m multiple millions it's we're there we got it that is the break even is uh you know 3496 scans or you just tell your boss we've got to get 3500 scans a year <laughs> might as well even round it up but uh there you go so that's it Kind of a, this, this is a taking that, that profit uh, equation and taking it one step further in your understanding where you're looking at it as also being utilized for break even, but it's nothing fancy. It's just 
what's going to give us zero total profit, and that'll be break even. All right, so there's that example. Let's take a look at uh, a couple of more here. Okay, let's take a look at our next example. This one's going to be a little lengthy, but it will kind of tie in some things that we did with the first two examples. And again, take it to the next step. because We've kind of been building upon um, that, uh, that whole uh, profit equation as, we, as, as we've been going through kind of this uh, kind of sample quiz review. So let's take a look at this one. We've got Albuquerque uh, Radiology Group. And they have, um, they want to invest in a new CT scanner. And the group estimates that, uh, you know, kind of the same information we've been given before. We're going to get a, a revenue of $1,500 per scan. Market demand is 5,000 5, scans. The group has a choice between two different types of scanners. Uh, each scanner has that 5,000 uh, capacity, but they have that different mix of labor and capital costs, that different mix of variable and fixed costs that are involved. Scanner A would result in a total fixed cost of one million per year and would yield a profit of half a million if there are 5,000 scans. Scanner B has a little, um, a, a little less on the fixed costs at 800,000, but doesn't quite make as much uh, with the profit yield on that at 450,000. And again, all using the same number of scans at 5,000. At what number of scans are the scanners equally profitable? Okay, so basically what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna have to set up the profit equation. So scanner A, you're going to have the profit equation for scanner A equals the profit equation for scanner B. Remember the profit equation as we've been kind of going through this, uh, you know, is going to be your total revenue minus your variable costs minus your fixed. We know some things. We do know what total revenue would be for each, both scanner A and B, because we know the revenue per scan and we know the number of scans. We've got revenue per scan. Let's make this red. We know revenue per scan. We know number of scans. And we'll, we'll run this through. I'll calculate it, but we know that part. We know the fixed costs that was given to us, the one million for scanner B and the 800,000 for scanner A, or for scanner, I'm sorry, for scanner B is the 800,000, for scanner A is the one million. Now, what we don't know it's kind of what we haven't been knowing in all along is what the variable costs are for each, each one of those. So you're going to have to go through, in this particular example, the way that it's set up, you're going to have to go through and we're going to have to calculate that variable cost for both scanner A and B. Then we're going to go back and set the equation uh, that they're equal to each other to find out the ultimate number of scans uh, the old, this number of scans where they are equal. Okay, so write all this information down and we're going to go to a new page. We're going to break down and find out each of the variable costs on scanner A and B and then drop that into the equation. So pause the video, write down all the essential facts as we're going to be going through a few pages here. Okay, so let's do scanner A first. This will be kind of a retread of other information, which, which we've already done. We've, we've done this uh, in the other types and in, in the other two examples, but it doesn't hurt to do this over again. So we've got the $1,500. That's the uh, revenue per scan. We know that there is going to be, uh, oops, that's a five. There's going to be 5,000 scans. That's my total revenue. 
minus my variable costs, I'll just say V, which we don't know what that is, um, times 5,000, then minus the fixed cost, and for scanner A was a million. We know that it's going to equal total profit of half a million dollars. So let's do some math here real quickly. We're going to get 7.5 million. Make sure I got enough zeros in there. Yeah, I do. Okay. Minus, again, V for the unknown with variable costs times 5,000 minus a million. Those of you probably saw I could have skipped a step here, but I decided not to. So, and then we'll go back to the half a million. Let's bring these two together. Switch to yellow. We're going to bring these two together. That's going to be uh, six. Point five million, because we're just going to take that one minus a million, or seven point five million. Same difference. That's going to be six hundred or six million five hundred minus V equals half a million. It's constantly simplifying here. From there, I'm going to remove. We're going to move this guy off by subtracting half a million from each side. That's going to give me six million here now. Minus V times 5,000 equals zero. Let's move this over to this side by adding on both sides of the equation. So we'll get six million. equals V times 500,000. And now we want to just find out what V is. So now we're going to divide both sides. We're going to divide both sides by 500,000. So I'm just going to divide by or by 5,000. If I divide both sides by 5,000, I'm going to get V is going to equal, running the math here, we are going to get 1,200. So that is our variable cost for scanner A. Let's do, let's do B. I'll try to do this on the same page here. So we're going to do B. Um, with B, our information was exactly the same as far as the revenue. Okay. Both, you know, the revenue was projected at 1500 per scan. So that's going to be the same. So I'm just going to skip that step and I'm just going to drop the 7,500 in there. You could have gone through the step if you want. If you feel better with that, that's okay. But it's the same because, you know, they're charging $1,500 per scan and they estimate they're getting 500 scans or 5,000 scans, no matter what type of scanner you have. General GE, Toshiba, whatever. Um, you're going to get uh, the same amount there. The, the difference between the two scanners were the fixed and the variable costs. Okay, so scanner B, we had um, the unknown, which will be, we'll just keep that V times 5,000 minus a little bit different on the fixed. That was 800,000. And then the total profit was a little bit less at 450. So let's do some simplification here. Let's go ahead and put this one and put this together with that. So I'm subtracting that off. That's going to get, let's see, make sure I got my math right. Yeah, I think that's going to equal um, 6,700,000. Okay. 
minus V times the 500 scans equals 450 thou. Let's do some more simplifying. Let's go ahead and move this over to here by subtracting on both sides. The subtraction will get us 6,250,000 minus V times 5,000 equals zero. Well, let's, uh, we've got to solve for V, so we're going to move that over to this side of the equation by adding to uh, each side. So that's 6,250,000 equals V times 5,000. I'm going to divide both sides, little sound effect there, by 5,000 to get V just by itself. When you do that, you're going to find that V equals, let's see, checking my calculation here on my phone, V equals 1,250. So there you go. And that is the variable cost per scan. Variable cost per scan. So we've got, we've got our two numbers. Now, let's go to the next page, set, we're going to set A and B equal to each other in the profit formula now that we have all the little pieces parts. In setting up the formula, let's just go ahead and start kind of with the, with the basic here. Well, let's just say we got A on this side. B on this side. Doesn't make a difference, but that's what we're going to do. You could flip-flop them as whatever. Does it? That's okay. So we've got 1,500 uh, times. Now, in this case, we don't know the number of scans. So what we're doing, we're going to leave the, uh, that's what we're solving for. What, well, what was the number of scans? If you go back to the original question, what was the number of scans that made both of these scanners equally profitable. So we're just, I'll just use S as the mystery number, the number of scans. So that, this part of the equation is the revenue, okay, minus our variable costs times the number of scans, minus one million that's fixed. Remember, that doesn't have, has nothing to do with numbers of scans. No matter what, we're going to get $1 million cost. Then on the B side of the equation, same revenues, or, you know, figure per scan, which was the 1500 These are dollars, okay? And I'll quit doing the dollars on there, but just know all of those are dollars minus the variable, and remember the variable that we had was um, $1,250 per scan, minus the fixed costs, and for that scanner it was a little bit less, it was only $800,000. Alright, now we're just going to simplify these guys. Um, I think you can see some pretty quick simplifications on here. So let's let's take these out right here. That's going to be this. 300 scans minus 1 million. A lot of zeros. Simplify that. That's going to be 250 scans minus... 800,000. Let's do a little bit more um, simplification. Let's go ahead and move this over to that side. I want to isolate, I want to isolate the variable that I want to solve for. I don't want to have a bunch, I just want to have one S as my goal. One, whatever the variable is, one X, one S, one V, whatever you're doing. You only want to have one of those. So, um, 
let's go ahead and uh, subtract 250 uh, S from each side. Again, S is an arbitrary placeholder for the mystery number, the mystery number of scans. And that's going to equal then 50 S minus 1 million equals a negative, because I hadn't changed that part, minus 800. Now, Let's go ahead and get rid of this million. I'm going to add a million to each side. So 50s equals, it takes 1 million plus a minus 1 million equals 0. And then 1 million plus the minus 800,000 is going to equal 200,000. So now you can see it's pretty simple at this point. I'm going to divide each side by 50, and with that, I'm going to get S equals, hit the division button, and we're going to get 400. So what does that mean? That means that both scanners are equally profitable at the 400,000 or the 4,000 scans. Now, we're not asking in this particular question, but just as a theoretical, which scanner starts to be more profitable at higher numbers of scans? You know, that would be, if you're a manager, you'd probably want to know, uh, know that one as well. You know, which one's going to do better at 40 in the long run. Maybe one scanner might be more profitable at the lower numbers, um, and then the other ones might be better at the, at the higher numbers. How could that be? Well, let's say you had a if you had, if you look at that profit equation, if you had a large fixed cost, but a small variable cost, and once you kind of covered the amount of the fixed cost, but your variable costs were significantly smaller than another option, you will slowly, you will, you will start to outpace because you're making more per scan. Um, by reason of having a lower variable cost per scan than maybe another option. So there is, there is a, there is a situation where some, some things might be cheaper on the lower volume and some might be better for you in the higher volume. So, uh, just some food, uh, food for thought. Not asked for in this question, but this one gives you a good conception of that. There is a point where both scanners are equal and just using that, uh, that profit uh, equation to do that. So uh, do keep in mind that when you're looking at any of our, any quiz I'm going to give you, um, there might be some other, um, this one was rather detailed in how I went through it. It was, uh, you know, basically three individual steps. Sometimes there are shortcuts. So when you're looking at this week's quiz and uh, maybe you see a problem like this, uh, look for any shortcuts. Uh, before you go into it. I gave you, in going through this, uh, a long method. Chances are, though, there's going to be a shortcut. Uh, but if you don't catch the shortcut, that's okay, too. You can do this long method, and you would be um, absolutely fine. So there's enough hint for you uh, on anything that you should see like this. All right, let's take a look at a couple more examples here, and uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be done with our walkthrough. All right, example four. We can take a little break because this uh, it'll be easy for these next two. Three is really the that that third example that we have that was really kind of bringing a lot of things together. This one is going to be pretty, I think, pretty uh, pretty easy for you. So let's take a look at this one. We've got um, consider the following. We've got some fixed cost listed here at uh, eighty thousand or I say 80 million, we've got our variable costs per inpatient day. We've got our revenue per inpatient day. And what is the contribution margin? So this is a contribution margin question. Uh, so let's, uh, let's break this down a little bit. Um, and it's pretty, pretty easy. Don't have to overthink this one. So contribution margin is basically, I'll call it CM, the contribution margin is basically the revenue 
uh, per unit or whatever, day, patient, whatever you want to call it, um, minus the, uh, the variable costs, you know, per that uh, unit, day, patient, you know, visit, um, whatever, whatever it is, um, but on a unit, on a unit basis. And that's all we need to do is set up the problem like this. So what is our um, revenue per unit? Is it given here? It is revenue per inpatient day. We want again. We want to find the contribution margin. So we know the um, we're dealing the unit in this case is going to be those inpatient days. So we're going to we're going to use that, and we know that is fifteen hundred dollars minus. Do we know the variable costs per day? Yeah, it's listed right here. It's just that simple. And that's going to be uh, 600 in this case. So our contribution margin is going to equal 1,500 minus 600. So that is a, I don't think I need a calculator for this one, um, but you never know with me. So $900, that's your contribution margin. It's just that simple. There is a little bit of a red, I guess a red herring in here. And you know, all questions usually have some sort of, I don't know, little extra piece of data sometimes in there that you don't need. This one has the fixed costs in here. So don't let that, uh, that throw you if, if you see that in there. Contribution margin is just simply that uh, revenue per unit minus the variable cost per unit equals contribution margin. But what does contribution margin mean? Contribution to what? Think about that for a moment. Well, um, I guess the nice way to think about it is it's really the contribution that you are making towards covering the fixed costs. For every inpatient day that you generate, your contribution margin is $900 contributing to, think of it that way, covering your fixed costs. You could figure out how many days would it take you know, with that contribution margin, how many inpatient days would it take to cover your fixed costs? You could do that. So think of it that way. It's, you know, what does it contribute to? It's the contribution to covering the, uh, the fixed costs to which you, which you have in, in that situation. So that's as easy, to, as easy as that problem is. Don't overthink that type of problem. Let's move on to our last example. With this example, we're going to bring back that uh, familiar profit equation. And uh, remember, that is going to be the, um, you know, we have our, our total revenue, you know, revenue, whoops, revenue minus variable costs minus fixed costs equals our total profit. What we want to know in this case is what is the break-even volume in patient days? So that's kind of the cue. Remember what break-even, what did we just say how to do break-even? It's simply that profit equation set to zero. So we're going to fill in some of the things that we do know. And what is our total revenue? Well, total revenue in this case, we have revenue per inpatient day. So I'm going to list, we have $1,600 per inpatient day. I'm going to use, I've got a variable I don't know, which is what I'm solving for. I want to solve for patient days. So that all works out really, really well. So the, the variable, the unknown is patient days. I'm just going to say D, okay? So 1,600 times D, that would equal my total revenue if I knew what D was minus our variable costs, which we do know are $600. That's listed right here. So 600 D, don't know how many days, minus, oh, coming up to something that I do know, minus 11, I'm going to say, put an M in there for million because I don't want to put all those zeros in there, minus 11 million. Um, so all we got to do is solve for D. How many patient days is going to take to reach zero that break even on our profit equation? We're going to 
do some simplification here and here, okay? I think you can see that pretty quickly jumping out. That is going to be 1,000 days, or D, minus, well, let's, I think you're good enough we could skip this step. We're going to take the 11 million, and we're going to move it to this side of the equation. We do that by adding 11 million to both sides. So it gets rid of this negative 11 million and puts it over here on the zero side. And now, what are we going to solve for? Like I've said, we're solving for D, okay? So you divide by 1,000. That gets rid of that. That gets rid of that. Divide by 1,000. And uh, punching it in on the calculator, that equals, well, you guys can probably do that one in your head. I can't. That equals 11,000 D, days, patient days. So there's the answer. Our break even on patient days is 11,000. And it's as simple as that. So try not to overthink this one. Uh, it's just kind of another spin on a break even. So there you go. There's some walkthrough on some potential uh, types of questions that could be on the quiz. Uh, do take a look at those. Hopefully you've taken the time to walk through this and hopefully it has helped. Uh, I think the concepts uh, will be pretty similar to what you'll see on, uh, on this week's quiz. Um, so again, good luck with this, with this week's quiz, and as always, thanks for watching.